These are scriptures you all know. But I think sometimes we need a reminder. I want to talk about little things. And we're a little group. We're a little church. We're a little assembly. But with God, when little is much, when God is in it. First Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. For you see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Good Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for another time, Lord, you've given us, Lord, to gather in your house. Lord, we thank you for this place that we can gather, Lord, and we thank you for those that are gathered here. Lord, now as we look into your word, we pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would give us that that we need, Lord, that you would give us something, God, that we can take away with us, Lord, that will help us become more of that that you would have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This probably won't be very long, and as I said, these are things that you know, but I think sometimes we need a reminder. You know, I, I think often, a lot of times, God has me preach on things that I know you already know, but I think often of what Peter said. I think of me, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, not teaching you anything new, not telling you anything new, because there is no new thing. The Word of God is the Word of God. But I think sometimes we need to stop and be reminded and to think about things. And he starts out here saying, For you see your calling, brethren, not many wise men, not, uh, not many uh, mighty, not many noble are called. And that's the first thing I want to touch on. You see your calling. You have a calling. God has called you. Uh, you all know the scripture that uh, Jesus said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. He called you out of the world. And he called you for a purpose. And when he called you, it was indeed to save your soul and to deliver your soul from hell. It was for that. But that's not the only thing that it was for. And when he called you, he had in mind, you know, it, it says back in uh, Jeremiah, I believe it is, he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. He already was thinking what, what he wanted you to do, what he wanted you to accomplish, what your purpose was going to be. That's your calling. He, he had called you out to do something. And it's not just about getting saved. It's about after that we are saved, God has a job for each and every one of us. And God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And so we are called out. But he says that it's not many mighty. It's not many noble. It's not the great things. It's not the big thing. It's not the amazing things that he calls out. But it says he has caused called out the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Base things uh, and things which are despised hath God chosen and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. And he gives us all these examples. And again, I already said you little as much when God is in it. And if you go back and you look at all the people that God called throughout the Bible, most of them were just ordinary or lower class, what the world would have considered lower class, or outcast, these are the ones that he chose, and these are the ones that he used to do what he wanted to get accomplished in this world. You go back and, and you look at uh, David, he was just a little sheep herder boy. But look what God did with him. Yeah, you go back and you look at Joseph. Again, just uh, all his brothers were uh, bigger and more than him and all that. And his brothers didn't like him and sold him and all these things. He was a nobody to begin with. But look what God did with him. <coughs> and there are many, many others. You can take a look at Moses. 
He was destined uh, and determined to be killed as a child, as a baby. Uh, it was decreed that he should die. But look what God did with him. He was uh, uh, the child of a slave woman. Uh, his life wasn't even uh, mattered. It, it wasn't important. It, it was to be stamped out. But look what God did with him. And I want to tell you something. God knows who he's picking. God knows who he's chosen. God knows who he has called and he knows what he can do with those that he has called. If, like these people that I have mentioned, they trust their God and they believe their God and they understand what their God can and will do through them. And I said, I believe the purpose of this is just to stir us up a little bit. I believe, and I've said it since I started pastoring here, that this church can do mighty, mighty things. I believe that God can do amazing things through us. I believe that God will do amazing things through us if we get ourselves in that place where we believe it. I know it's hard and I know it's hard to picture it sometimes and it's hard to understand how can God take this little group of outcasts and nobodies and whatever we think of ourselves and we're out here in the middle of nowhere and good people are coming in and this and that. How can God do anything with that? He can because he is God. And he chose us, this kind of people, because those are the ones that he can use. And those are the ones that he wants to use. And he wants to use people like us so that the world will know. And so that people will know. So that men will know it is God. So that no flesh gets the glory. And no flesh gets the honor. And that sort of thing. And he chose these kind of things for a purpose. And yes, we are small. We are very small. Uh, even in the eyes of the small churches around here, we are small. Mm -hmm. But again, I want to say this. And we need to get this down in our hearts. And not just, it's not just a snappy little saying and something uh, nice to throw out there. We need to begin to believe this. Little is much when God is in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is. And again, I give you a few examples. You can go throughout the Word and find where God used people who were nobodies, who were nothings, who were outcasts. Uh, I mean, even the disciples, they were just fishermen and, and people like that, that the society didn't want anything to do with, that nobody would have even took a second look at. But look what God did through them. And why? Because they allowed God to work through them. They believed God. They held fast. Even when it looked like nothing was happening. Even when it looked like nothing was going on. Uh, even when Joseph, when he went down in Egypt, and things looked good for him for a while. And then all of a sudden, he gets accused of things he didn't do. And he ends up in prison for a while. But he never quit on God. And he never gave up on God. I know sometimes we sit here uh, week after week and month after month and we sit here and it don't look like anything's happening but we can't give up on God Amen. Right. Amen. I've heard many of you say this I want to know if you believe it it's God's time not ours right. Right. when God's ready God will move when God is ready it will happen but there is something and you know I say this all the time that can stop it from happening and that's us right. we've got to believe this that's right God chose this kind of people to confound the world, to set at naught the wisdom of men, to, to show them that it is God, that it is about God, that he is the power, that he is the authority. God chose people like us. And he goes on here, he says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. But listen, but of him are ye, you, every one of you, if you are a born again child of God, though you may be uh, a poor, though you may be an outcast in the eyes of the world, no, people may not think much of you. When they look at this little church, they may not think much of it and think we're just a tiny little group of people and we're never going to accomplish anything. But what he said... But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You are of Christ Jesus. 
you who've been called by him, you who have been chosen by him. And, and I know I say these kind of things a lot, and I know you know these kind of things because you've read them, and I know you continue to read them, but when is it going to get real to us? It's got to become real. It ain't enough just to say it. It ain't enough just to know it in your mind. It ain't enough just to read it in the book. It's got to become real to you. I talked about walking this morning with God. I'm going to tell you something. We need to start walking if, like we are children of God. That's right. We need to start walking in that power, in that authority. We need to go out there knowing that God has chosen us. God has called us for a purpose. God has picked us. And I think of this often of everybody in the world. He chose me. He chose me. And again, I want to make this extremely clear. It wasn't just for salvation. It wasn't just to get you out of hell. Because if all it was for is to get you out of hell and for salvation, you'd have done went home. You're here for a purpose. Right. And we, and I know I say this a lot, we're not fulfilling our purpose right. because we're not getting it. It's not becoming real to us. And I don't want to insult anybody. I don't want to offend anybody. But I got to say what God has given me. We gather here week after week after week after week. And we do our little thing. And then we go home. And what happens when we leave here? It ain't about just coming here and doing what we do here. We need to be doing something out there. And we're not going to do something out there until we understand and until we realize that's what we were called for. That's why we're here, to do something out there. We're not, I, I'm not here just to stand here on Sundays and holler at you all. You singers are not here just to stand here on Sunday and sing to us. Teachers are not here just to stand here on Sunday and teach. The work is out there. The job is out there. What we were called for is out there. That's right. And we need to get a bogus. And we need to get ourselves to understand there is an urgency. That there is not much time. We need to be about this. We need to be doing this. And you need to be able to tell yourself and believe it. I can do this because God has called me to do this. And God has equipped me to do this. We need to understand that in this flesh, just like Paul said, in this flesh, I am weak. But that I need to know that and understand that and really realize that. Because it's when I know that that God is strong in me. I can't go out there on my own and have a speech that will pull them into God. I can't go out there on my own and have studied under some professor and know how to get people. It's got to be God. It's got to be the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. And that's only going to work through me when I get me out of the way. That's right. That's right. But our biggest problem is we doubt ourselves, or we're scared, or, or we don't even know what to do, or things like that. What we need to do, I will tell you exactly what to do. Go out there and say, Lord, I trust you, and open your mouth and let him fill it. And he will. If you want to be used by God, God will use you. And you don't got to go study somewhere to learn how to witness. You don't got to go to school. You don't got to go to a seminary. You don't got to go to anything else. You got to go to the Father. Right. And if you go to God, and with all your heart, you want to serve Him, and you want to be a witness for Him, He will lead you. He will guide you. He will teach you. But you need to understand, it's no thing out of the realm of who you're supposed to be because you were called for that purpose. You know, I was called. I have a job. And I have specific things I have to do. And I'm supposed to do. And if I go to, to work tomorrow and I start doing somebody else's job and not doing my job, my employer's not going to be pleased with me. God's not pleased when we're not doing our job. We need to be doing our job. 
But the biggest thing I want you to understand is you can. You can. There's not a person sitting here who can't go out and witness. That's right. Would you like the Spirit speak? There's not a, maybe you can't if you go out and try to do it. You might get all tongue-tied. You might get all mixed up. You might make a mess of it. That's right. But would you let the Spirit use you? There's not a person who can't witness. I'm going to tell you something. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, if you're asking God to use you and you go out there to be a witness, that guy, and you walk up to someone and you just don't know what to say and you trust the Spirit and you open your mouth and maybe all you say is Jesus loves you, the Spirit can use that to convict that heart. Because it's the power of the Spirit, not the words. That's right. But we have to believe. We have to understand and know. We can. Just because there's only a, a little tiny handful of us don't mean we can. If there were just one, and there was many times in the book, one with God is a majority. That's right. We need to know this. We need to know this. Not just know it here. We know the scriptures, and we understand that these things are said, and we understand this is how it's supposed to be. But what we need to understand is it's true in me. It's true in you. If you let God use you, if you give yourself to God, and you understand that God has chosen you for this purpose, that is your job. And I'm going to tell you something. God will not send you to do a job without equipping you to do that job. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is believe him and trust him and understand that. We're going to go to the book of Proverbs in chapter 30. About little things. Because we are small. We are a little, a little people. A little church, a little assembly, a little group. But again, we need to understand that the might is not in numbers. The might is not in size. It's in Christ. It's in God. It's in knowing that, trust in Him, and believe in Him. Proverbs chapter 30, beginning at verse 24. There be four things which are little upon the earth. But they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. I want to look at each one of these things just for a minute, and I'm not going to take very long. One. But it says here, the ants are a people not strong. That means in size. If you go back, and again, I say a lot of the words matter because ants are strong. They can look like uh, 10 or 15 times their own weight. They are strong. Don't they be small? Well, what it means there is they're not huge. And we're not huge. When it comes to strength in numbers, we don't have that. But just like the ant, we have a power that, that uh, is belayed. I mean, that it just doesn't, you look at the ant and you wouldn't think that they're a very strong thing. They're a tiny little thing. But the ant can lift them. Uh, so many, I forget how many it was I looked, but I forgot. Eight or 15 or sometimes their own weight. They have a power that goes beyond their size. Their size is deceptive when it comes to looking at their power. And so are the children of God. They might look at us and think that's just a little group. That's just a small group. There isn't much there. But there is a strength here. When God is in us, when God is in this place, there is a power. Then the world may look at us. Then the church world may look at us. Now everybody may look at us and think that we are nothing and that there is nothing here. There is a power. Says they before um, the ants are people not strong yet they prepare, they prepare, they prepare. That's what is necessary. You have to be prepared. Uh, the answer says they prepare their meat in the summer before the rough time comes. You got to be prepared before you go out there and do the job that God has called you to do. And a part of that preparation is beginning to understand. I can. 
Through Christ I can. You all know this scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. I can. You know, we apply that a lot of time to things that we want, to things that we think we need, to problems and situations we have. We'll throw that one out there. I can do all things. We need to throw it out there and say, I can go out and win souls. I can go out and win 